Before we do the pale face piece, I want to introduce you to the artist so that, we can, so that you can have a little context for what is being projected behind because it's not a throwaway, it's intrinsic to the music. So Jerry Kearns is a celebrated artist in New York. He's exhibited internationally across the Americas, Europe, and Asia since the 1980s. He's been featured many times in the New York Times, Art and Auction, Art News, Art Forum, among many others. His paintings are included in many public and private collections, including the Museum of Modern Art, the National Gallery in Berlin, the Brooklyn Museum in New York, the Art Institute of Chicago, the Whitney Museum of American Art in New York, and the Norton Art Family Collection, as well as many others. What I wanted to tell you guys, though, is that um, what inspired me for this piece was when I went to his Pale Face exhibit in New York. And I was just blown away. There's a wow factor, as you'll see, to the color and energy of his paintings. And, and then, there's, then the next thing you do is you laugh. There's just a lot of humor, because you see comics. Uh, you see film noir. Uh, you see uh, you, you know, all of these things that seem uh, you know, very, very funny. And so you kind of laugh. And then you're going to look a little more. And you're going to notice layers and layers and layers. And for me, I began to feel a darkness uh, in those layers and a sense that all of these characters that at first seemed so funny, suddenly they realized I had a sudden shift in perspective and those characters were me. <laughs> those characters were us, all of us Americans. And uh, it gave me goosebumps. And that's why I knew I had to uh, write a piece on this. And so we're so fortunate that he's come here from New York to talk with us. Would you please give a warm welcome to Jerry Kearns. Have a seat, Jerry. <laughs> this is the improv part. <laughs> oh, come on, you've studied for hours. So um, I, I, guess, I think the first thing I wanted to have you discuss with the audience is what you discussed with me. Where, where did this idea come for, from getting a, kind of obsessed with American icons, uh, like uh, Western culture and hero mythology? I don't know. <laughs> uh, I look at the, I use the language of popular culture, and I look at the language as an alphabet or uh, a vocabulary that we're all familiar with, you know, and so, I wanted to make an art that was communicative, less than an interior or isolated art, but a, a socially communicative art that would talk about the nature of the culture we find ourselves in. I was born at the beginning of what is known really as the information age, you know, sort of, I'm a first generation television baby, you know. So it was, it, it was really natural for me from the beginning to look for identity in those forms. Uh, I think I learned a lot about, I assembled my personality by identifying with these various iconographies of popular culture. So uh, my plan was to make something that was a psychological approach to, to uh, re-investigating the nature of how we become who we are. So the imagery is based upon, uh, like you chose a certain iconography of the imagery, the hero, for, for, for example. I was having a conversation last night with uh, my friend John uh, Arvanides out there, a uh, very great artist, and uh, I, I said, you know, Superman was Ronald Reagan. Right, and that was the clean World War II hero. Okay, Bill Clinton was Batman. Right, <laughs> and that's the sort of good guy, bad guy, mixed together thing. Today we have the Joker. Right, <laughs> so if you look at that development over 40 years and you understand the motion of the culture, I'm interested in those kinds of. Uh, flows over time. What's so interesting is that um, with the way you've depicted these characters and, and also the, uh, you know, the other layers, that it, it has all these subconscious triggers for us, and that's what you're talking about, that, 
you know, in terms of communicating. Th things that we're not really aware of because it's just been part of who we are all this time. That's for sure. I mean, that's how we, I, I think we are, it's so evident now that we are in, a, in an age where, you know, there's no recognizable reality. You know, the story now is that if you have your own information system, you can create the reality for the culture. Uh, we're, we're a split apart culture now because there are these information systems uh, competing with each other for our minds. And, uh, you know, it's, I, th I think that's a really fascinating area for an artist to work in. You know, how, how do these mechanisms work to construct what we think, what we think about, and how we think about it? You know, so it's a sort of, as you said, series of layers that are more psychological than rational, more emotional than, than, than rational. You know, we respond. And so we're, manip we're manipulated constantly. Uh, our ambitions, our desires, our values, and so forth are used against us. I try to take that language and s read the subtext, and I try to come at it from a... Uh, I try to place myself within the maelstrom of information in a way I feel that's where we all are. Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, my, my reading of uh, a lot of the postmodern age that we're in is, is that um, reference is, 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 the, is the art in a certain way, understanding how to, to take those things. But the difficulty, of course, is we all come from such different uh, reference points these days. And in the um, paintings, one of the things that helped me so much when you, you talked about things that were just, I couldn't put my finger on, like the blue sky in your paintings at that point. You know, can you share a little bit about your thoughts about when you put some of these more subterranean elements in? Because it has a lot to do with the emotion of the paintings. I was in New York on 9-11, and uh, you know, I saw from my breakfast place the first tower. I rode my bicycle around uh, over Washington Square Park and looked through the arch and saw the first tower fall. Everyone remembers that sky that day. And, you know, a blue, clear sky in one historical moment has, has one, one kind of meaning. If you have a, a context like the 9-11 reality, the uh, blue sky becomes a kind of turning point or shifting point and the meaning of it depending upon what your experience is uh, with a particular historical moment the, the meaning shifts a lot uh, you know so that was really, it, it's also you know, daytime <laughs> it's daytime but that you know i couldn't understand why when i was seeing all these things with blue sky i was being, I was getting such this emotional wallop, and it's, so I just wanted to share with the audience, that was an example of one detail, and then you're suddenly aware of it, and you realize why you're suddenly uh, feeling different. And then Jerry, as he continued this series, uh, then that uh, blue sky changed, right? <laughs> changed into a Nighttime. inky night. Nighttime. <laughs> yeah, of where we are. Yeah. That's, that's well, the time we're in. That's where we're in night and day, you know? Yeah. And, uh, uh, I, it, it's like it's a way of uh, locating the mind again, you know, uh, within a generalized context. I did, a, you know, you notice there's a limited amount of architecture in, in the work. Uh, it's it's more about moving through time and space, and of course, uh, we all know that's a relative experience. Yes. <laughs> you know, yeah. So, yeah. Well, even your Guggenheim that you put in it is is one that is not tethered. Yeah. To well. To yeah. any kind of art comes place. from religion you know they you know the, if you think about the evolutionary nature of art it's a it's a survival trait and we know you know we know all the story of the cave paintings and how that moved forward the philosophy and art and all of that way of thinking and approaching thing come from the same place a kind of spiritual uh, and it's also a form of power art's a form of power who can express what at any given moment, extraordinary form, form of power. Um, and uh, in, in, in a way, uh, I chose a vocabulary that was available in order to emphasize the, 
the notion that you can take the power and rearrange the form. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, it's fascinating when, uh, as you point out, or as you'll see, it's not clear the normal values you associate with these with, with these icons starts to shift. It's not a it's not a static thing. Like I was telling you, my my. Uh, personal experience was suddenly having this realization I was not outside of the work, I was inside of it. And that's it's kind of the thing that you're doing when you draw layers inside of... Popular culture is a mirror. Yeah. It, you know, we see ourselves in it. And, and, and you see it relative to your particular perspective, your location in, in, in that culture. We're undergoing an extraordinary... At, this, at the moment where we have this horribly right-wing, right-wing political, you know, fascist, authoritarian reality. And culture right now is an extraordinary uh, opening moment. Uh, uh, people of color, gender questions, uh, a lot's going on now that reminds me of, of, of you know, when, in the late 60s and so forth. We had a right-wing reality and we had a tremendous uh, upsurge of creativity and uh, culture. And I, I think uh, culture, uh, in many ways is leading the way back to some sense of humanity, some sense of self, some sense of, uh, of a shared meaning. You know, We don't have a shared meaning at this moment. We have no center. You know? And uh, culture can, can offer that, that kind of uh, center. If you use a language that people are familiar with, they can go with you Given you don't have to give them the answer or their perspective, uh, you show them this vocabulary that they can uh, re and that's reassert the, yeah. for their, from themselves. Yeah, and that's 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 our artistic struggle to find that for to find that vocabulary and entrance and in, in, into psyches where everyone is coming from all directions. That's some people's struggle, yeah. <laughs> well, certainly mine. <laughs> yes, 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 it is. <laughs> and I think, you know, so this is wonderful. It, they'll have an opportunity, the way we're showing the images now in a video, to, see, to experience the paintings in a very different way. Yeah, wonderful artist, Amanda Tiller in, uh, in, in Manhattan. Uh, um, I should say I worked with her uh, and, 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 and the way in which she took apart and put back together again. If I took apart popular mainstream culture and put it back together, Amanda took me apart and put it back together. So uh, it's, a, it's an interesting process. And the, the film does, uh, makes connections that are not obvious in, in the still uh, frame. And, and that's a lovely part of the whole event and, and, and combining it with your wonderful music. It's, uh, it's a great honor and pleasure. Well, thank you. It's, it's going to be... Are we getting the hell out of here now? We're getting the hell out of here okay. now. <laughs> Please give a warm thank welcome. You. Thank you so much.